Want to know how you can make money on Fiverr writing sales and marketing emails for people? Hey guys, it's Mike Nardi here. I'm a freelance copywriter and I make money by writing sales and marketing emails for my clients on Fiverr to help them sell and market their products. I've been freelancing for about two and a half years. I've just passed the 500 completed order mark and I've made over $41,000 for myself in my spare time as a freelancer. It's been awesome. And guess what? You can too. My most profitable and popular Fiverr gig is one where I just write email copy for people, people or businesses all over the world. I help people sell and market their products. In this video, I'm gonna show you the exact steps I take for every copywriting client I have who needs emails done for them. From before they place an order, to placing an order, to completing the actual writing of the email copy, to delivering the final product to my clients. I'm gonna cover all those steps in this video. So if you're a new Fiverr seller, you're aspiring to be a copywriter, you think writing email sales copy or marketing emails might be something that you're interested in, follow along in this video. It's gonna be a tutorial. I'll walk you through all the steps I take and you can follow those steps to add some success to your workflow and your process as a seller on Fiverr. Just real quick, before we get into the tutorial, I really just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me for this video. This YouTube channel has been growing so fast lately, people have been finding it helpful and it's been really motivating for me and that's all because of you. So thank you so much for joining me on this video and if you haven't yet subscribed, it'd be really cool if you considered hitting the subscribe button and joining us on this journey. Let's get into the video. All right, so email copywriting tutorial time. I'm just gonna start out by saying that in this video, I'm gonna outline the steps that I take from gathering information from my clients to completing the work to delivering the work to them. And it's important for you to understand that if you wanna make money as a copywriter and you wanna make money selling sales and marketing emails as a copywriter on Fiverr, this tutorial should just be the starting point for you. If you wanna get really, really good at copywriting, you wanna make a lot, a lot of money and charge you know, top dollar for your services, this is just gonna get you started and what you need to do after watching this tutorial is practice, improve your craft and become the best copywriter you can be. I'm just giving you the tips that I can give you to help you start on that journey. So have that in mind, watch this video, but practice a lot. Okay, so for every copywriting project or every client that I'm talking to, I break down my workflow into three key steps. I don't skip any of these and I take each step no matter who the order is with and what the project's for. These are my three steps to creating successful and effective sales and marketing emails. Step one, I call discovery. This is the phase in the workflow where I gather information, ask questions, and do research on my client, their goal, and their target clients. Step two is the actual writing phase. This is where I actually put together the email, the subject lines, and you know all the copy that I'm gonna send to them in the completed delivery. And step three, I call packaging and delivery. Step three happens when you finish writing the email, you package it, and you send it to them. This is the last stage in my process. The reason I do things in this way is because I find that um, when working as a copywriter or a freelancer, it's really helpful to break down things that you do all the time, repeatable processes into pieces. So by breaking down my email writing workflow into these three pieces, I can ensure that on every order, I'm collecting the information I need and I'm preparing myself and giving myself the best possible chance of delivering a top-notch project and that's important because with every order my goal is to get a five-star rating and do such a great job that my clients love me and they even leave me a tip and that happens often so that's why I follow these three steps um, you know as you go through this video I also want to point out you don't have to follow these three steps these are the three steps that I follow use them in your process see if they work if you need to add a step remove a step tweak a step do things a little differently that's totally cool and that's up to you these are just three steps that I follow that work really well for me. So the first step that I go through is what I call discovery. And in the discovery phase of my workflow, my goal is to figure out what my client's goals are with hiring me, like what do they want to get out of this email or email sequence. And then once I figured that out, I try to figure out and understand how I'm going to help them get to that goal. During this step, the main focus is asking them a lot of questions about their business, their product, their buyers, their competitors, their target market, their 
value proposition, any question you can think of that might be helpful for you to write a solid piece of email copy, you should ask. This is important because not only does going through this type of an exercise give you the information you need to deliver this project to the client's specifications, but it also serves as an opportunity for you to identify whether or not there's requirements that you can't do for your client. And if there are, this is the time to identify them and talk about them because as a freelancer on Fiverr, our worst nightmare is having a buyer place an order and then realizing after they place the order that we can't do it. It leads to order cancellations and negative ratings and we don't want that. So now I'm gonna go through a bunch of different questions you can ask your buyers to help qualify them and collect information to help you complete the order. So I'm gonna put them all on the screen here and I'm gonna talk through each of them. You can write these down and use these in your process when asking your buyers questions in this discovery phase. What are you trying to accomplish with this email? So with this question, you want to figure out what their goal is. Are they trying to book meetings? Are they trying to sell a product? Are they trying to, trying to get people to sign up for free trials? It's important that you know what the goal is because that's going to dictate how you write the email sequence. What product or service are they selling? This is a good question to ask to any anyone hiring you. You need to know what they want to sell or what they're talking about in these emails. What is the value proposition of their product or service? This one is really important, right? A lot of buyers will tell you, I need an email to sell this product. But you know, we're copywriters. We're not experts on all the thousands of different businesses of the thousands of different clients we might work with. So it's important to ask your client, hey, what value does this product offer your clients? That will help you write these emails because ultimately you're writing the emails for their clients, not for you, you and me for their clients. So get them to explain what their value proposition is. Do people already like your product? This is a great question. This will help you identify whether or not this is even possible. If they are selling a really horrible product and nobody likes it, you might not be able to make magic happen with these emails. So ask them, do people already like your product? If they do, what do they say about your product? Do you have any testimonials you can share? If they don't, ask why and if you still decide to take on this project after realizing that they probably have a horrible product you can use reasons why people don't like it to maybe focus on the positives how much does this product cost this is an important question is the product sold on a one-time payment on a subscription is it expensive is it cheap is it average how does it stack up in price to the competition right important questions to ask before you start writing an email who is their target market and related to who is their target market i always like to ask are you sending these emails to a lead list you purchased or are these warm leads that you've generated through your business? This is important because how you write an email targeting a warm prospect is very different than how you would write an email that's essentially a cold email campaign or cold solicitation. Very important. Other than these questions, ask whatever else you think would help you complete the project. So if you haven't written these down, pause the video, go back. You can use these questions and using these questions in your order requirements question section or in conversations with your buyers when they message you will really help you get the information you need to deliver a top-notch project. All right, step two, writing the actual email copy. When I start writing the email, the first thing I always focus on is the subject line. The subject line is arguably the most influential part of an email and an indicator of how successful that email is going to be for your client. The subject line is where we are convincing your client's prospects to take the time to click and open that email. Email open rates are a metric that almost every marketing team tracks and being able to write a good subject line will help you have higher open rates and higher open rates mean higher read rates and higher read rates means more people are gonna buy stuff or respond to the emails that your clients are sending. So I usually focus on three different styles of subject lines. I'll either ask a question in the subject line, I'll include a statistic in the subject line, or I'll come at the email with a very conversational subject line. The reason I do this is because nowadays so many people are marketing and clickbait has become just such a common part of everyday life that people receiving emails have like a radar built into their brains now. If you send a really cheesy email subject line or something that's like super aggressive and salesy, 
people are going to see it and instantly delete it. So I find that question statistics are coming off as really casual has helped me and my clients have really high open rates and that leads to you know success with an email campaign. So here's an example of each type of subject line that I like to write. I'll put them on the screen and I'll explain different scenarios where I would consider using each type of subject line. And you should write this down because I don't use question type subject lines for all of my prospects. I don't use statistic types type subject lines for all my prospects. It depends on the prospect and you will decide on which subject line you'll use based on the information you've already gathered from your client in the discovery phase. Here's a question based subject line. Question about customer satisfaction at ABC Corp. In this example, I'm imagining that I'm a sales rep selling some sort of customer service, CRM, or customer satisfaction tool. I, I framed the question based on some piece of information that I'm probably planning on chatting about in the email that would be relevant to the pains or gains that this type of employee would be interested in talking about. In this case, the topic of interest is customer satisfaction. And I would only use this type of a question-based subject line about customer satisfaction if the person I'm sending it to is likely to care about customer satisfaction. I'll give you an example. I would probably send this to a manager or director of customer service. I would not send this to a VP of IT or a CFO. The subject line, if you're asking a question, it needs to be a question that's relevant to the person you're asking it to. Here's a stats-based subject line. ABC Corp, a part of the 37% mentioned in that study. In this subject line, I'm using a statistic to pique the reader's interest that their company might have been mentioned, impacted, or benefit from a study that I'm gonna talk about in the body of the email. This type of subject line, if you use, frame it the right way, gets really high open rates because the person reading this, if they're truly interested in the you know well-being and improving of their business, they're gonna click through the email because they wanna see what study you're talking about. I would use this type of a statistics-based subject line if in the discovery phase, I did some research or my, my buyer sent me some information that would imply that there's some interesting information out there on this company. Are there some research studies that were done, some surveys, some articles with statistics that uh, you can use to tell a company compelling story in the email. If you uncovered any of that in the discovery portion, you might want to consider using a statistics-based subject line. Here's a conversational subject line. These are my favorite. Can I get you on the phone this week, Joe? In this subject line, I'm using a very conversational and just human approach. Not every email subject line needs to sound and feel so corporate, right? Sometimes just being a human and talking to someone naturally really will help you get an get increased open rate with your email. So I would use conversational style subject lines in a situation where I feel that the person I'm emailing is likely to get a lot of cold calls, a lot of cold emails, and a lot of solicitation requests from other sales reps. Plain and simple, people who work in industries where they're constantly being hounded to buy new software, new tech, new products, they, they're really good at realizing when an email is coming from a salesperson that they probably don't want to talk to. So if I feel that this is the type of prospect we're targeting with an email, I'll use something conversational. Sometimes you catch them with their guard down, they'll click through, read the email, and if they realized in the email body, hey, this might actually help me, they might respond and that's really helpful when it comes to email marketing. After you've decided on a subject line, next part's the email body and I usually break down the body into three key components. The first part is the opening line or the hook. That's what you'll use to kind of win the reader's trust and get them to continue reading through the email. The second portion is the main part of the body and this is usually where I either pitch my services or talk about the stuff that I'm trying to talk about in this email. And the third section of the emails I write is the closing line or the hook. This is where after you know your buyer has read through the whole email, you're asking them to take action. You're asking them to respond. You're asking them to sign up for a trial. You're asking them to buy something. If you've done a good job making this email tailored to that prospect, by the time they get to the hook, if you've written a good hook, they might take action and convert on the email. And that's the end goal. So when it comes to the hook or the opening line, I always try to make it as interesting as possible for my prospect. I don't use it as an opportunity to introduce myself, my company, or why I'm emailing them. I wanna win their trust 
by talking about something they want to talk about. And the hook will depend on what type of subject line I've used. So if I ask a question in uh, the subject line, I'll probably create a hook that's either something that's like a rephrasing of that question or re-asking the question or asking the question in a way that gets them thinking that this email is probably really relevant to them. So in the example of using a question-based subject line, the hook might be something like this. Hey Bob, a lot of ABC Corp's competitors have been focusing a lot on improving customer satisfaction lately. Is this something that you're focused on at ABC Corp also? After you've written what you think is a good subject line, this is where you gotta write the meat of the email. Assuming that they've gotten this far, this is where you're gonna pitch your services, talk about what you wanna talk about, and ultimately put together the bulk of the email. For this section, you're gonna use and reference all of the information you collected during your discovery phase. All the information on the client, the product, their, their value, all that stuff. You wanna put something together that's also not too long. So use all of that information and create an email body that's to the point and doesn't waste a lot of time because people have really short attention spans. You could try something like this. This is an example based on the example we've been going with with regards to customer satisfaction. The reason I ask is because at ABC Customer Satisfaction, we help customers just like yours leverage our lightweight platform to improve customer satisfaction. Most of our clients tell us that after using our platform, their customer satisfaction increases by 10% and their sales increase by 5%. And the last part of the email is the call to action, the closing line. At this point, you've assumed that they were hooked into your email, they clicked through, they read the body, and they were interested. So at this point, you're gonna ask them to do something. Do you wanna book a meeting? Do you wanna get them to book a demo? Do you want them to sign up for a free trial? Depending on what the goal of the client is, that's how you're gonna write uh, your call to action. Here's a quick example. Here's a link to our free demo account. If you're interested, you can check it out and see how we might be a good fit at your organization. If you have any questions, just let me know and we can set up a call to discuss. Writing a good call to action definitely isn't easy. This is just a quick example you can use to give you an idea of what that should look like. Ultimately, this is one of those parts that you're gonna need to practice a lot. Once you figure out what your writing style is and what your, you know, your writing voice is, write a call to action that kind of jives with you, right? Call to actions are important. That's where you're asking the person reading the email to do something for you. And that's where your clients using these emails are gonna accomplish the goals of their campaigns through the call to action. So the third step I take in my process is packaging and delivering my finished copywriting project. So after you've completed an email or the email sequence for your prospect, the last step is to deliver that email to them. You know, it might be tempting to just attach the file to the delivery and be on your merry way. But I've actually found that by spending a little bit of time putting together a little delivery message, you know, thanking the buyer for their order, explaining a little bit about the strategy you chose to took in the email, and maybe mentioning some of the, the approaches you took in that email and referencing them, goes a long way into making your buyers happy, getting five-star ratings, and getting repeat business. It's worked really well for me, and I think hundreds of the reviews I have are due to you know, taking these, this type of effort with the final touches. So based on the examples we've been talking about, your delivery message could be something like this. Hey Stan, attached is the completed delivery. I thought it'd be really good to target managers or directors of customer service uh, with the messaging around how we could help them improve customer satisfaction at their organization. I used the statistic to do this because I think that uh, based on the fact that this organization has been in the news so often about their great customer experience, it would be something they would be happy to chat about. In the body of this email, I sparked a conversation about customer satisfaction and positioned your organization as a great company Company to help them on this journey. Thanks again for working with me. Look forward to the next one. And that's it, deliver the order. So those are the three steps I take with every order to write emails for my clients on Fiverr. The only thing left for you to do after watching this video is to practice. Practice makes perfect. Go back, write these steps down, review them, and see if they make sense based on how you wanna work as a Fiverr freelancer. Try it out and let me know how it goes. If you want some more, information and content about copywriting, there are a couple other copywriting tutorials on this channel. I'll link to them in the description. Thanks again for watching and until next time, cheers.